What up, guys? It's your boy, Sam, and I'm back with another video. Today is a good day. I'm going to a doctor's appointment. Hopefully, starting testosterone. Probably not today, but going to be on the right track to do it. Um, I am excited because it's January 4th. And on January 1st was when my health insurance through my job finally kicked in and I can actually, you know, get a physical, get new glasses, get a cleaning, a dental cleaning, and my favorite, start testosterone. Um, now, many of you are probably wondering why am I starting testosterone at 26 years old or trying to, um, is because... I actually wasn't even sure if I was getting health insurance. Yep. I was on my mom's health insurance till I was 26 years old. And then I had a job, but I didn't have health insurance. It's like free benefits through my job. So I was going to have to pay for it. I knew health insurance is an arm and a leg. And I know people I work with have to pay almost $200 a week for health insurance. I only have to pay 80 some dollars every two weeks. So to me, that is a lot, but it's worth it in the long run. And of course, my copay is a lot more for different things and prescriptions are a lot more. So I was like, damn. But I didn't start testosterone 10 years ago because I was on my mom's insurance. And that's not why I didn't start testosterone 10 years ago. I had the ability to and I didn't really understand trans what transgender was 10 years ago. Um, I was actually diagnosed. Um, when I was in high school with something called Turner Syndrome. Turner Syndrome is not like uh, Down Syndrome. But the reason why I bring up Down Syndrome is because everybody knows Down Syndrome is when a person is missing a chromosome or has an extra chromosome. And then you have Down Syndrome. Turner Syndrome is is where my chromosomes are not X and X or X and Y. I forget what it's supposed to be when you're female. And I'm only referring female because I have boobs and a vagina. Cringe alert. And I'm sorry. Trigger warning. I should have gave it. I apologize. But it's the human anatomy. I'm not one of those trans people where I cringe at the sight or thought of a vagina. Like... I have a fiance who's female. Like, I love vagina. Do I love mine? No. I'm going to just shut up. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So, I was diagnosed with Turner Syndrome where I have X and O chromosomes, like a kiss or the weekend. Try to break the ice. Um, and then. I was also in that stage of high school. See, middle school, I, you know, did the typical transgender act. Or I was a tomboy, so I wore the I wore my brother's clothes and my brother's boxers and my brother's hat and coat and, and shoes, not shoes, but his socks. And I had guy shoes myself because, you know, if I was able to choose anything I like to wear, it was at least shoes. So I was... In that awkward um, high school stage where all transgenders also go through, where they feel odd and they feel weird and they feel wrong and they feel like they need to start acting like a proper woman, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Torturing yourself, buying makeup, putting on that makeup, buying clothes, trying to squeeze into those clothes, yeah. Yeah. All those great, great, great times. All because you were supposed to be more ladylike. You were supposed to have a boyfriend. And you were supposed to look pretty. 
pain is beautiful. Remember that. Yeah. So during that moment, I was also going through my medical problems. And so when she told me I could basically theoretically decide whatever hormone I wanted to be on, I was not exactly male or female other than the physical attributes. Imagine a doctor telling you that. And you didn't even know you were trans at that point. You just thought you were tomboy. You wanted to be a guy so bad. But you were in a situation in your social life where you felt like you were just starting to be a real woman. And just starting to figure out, damn, I'm a, I'm a grow big boobs and I'm going to be the prettiest girl in the world. But theoretically, you just wanted a pretty girl in your life. You didn't want to be that pretty girl. You know what I'm talking about. Maybe not you, because you're just confused or you're a trans -setter. But you, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, I opted for estrogen. And I was also told that I was at a risk of ovarian cancer and all this disease and all these problems because I've never had a period. And that's why I went to that doctor to begin with, because I was 17 years old and I didn't have a period yet. And I knew it was a problem. And my mom was a late bloomer, so I was like, all right, I'm 17 now. She had her period at 17, so I didn't get mine. So that's when I said, okay, it's time to go to the doctors about this. And I also came out at that time, too, saying I was raped when I was younger, because I was. From the age 6 to 12. Wow, this is a really long and complicated opening story. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, yeah, so from the age 6 to 12, my next door neighbor was sexually not even assaulting me. He was raping me. We were having full-blown. Yeah. Um, so that's how that was. And I was understood that that was normal. That's how that happened. I was in kindergarten when it first started. So, I mean, you grow up with something, you think it's normal. Anyway, so because of all that, I kind of thought that's also why I didn't feel right as a woman. I felt violated at such a young age. I didn't think I was supposed to, you know, I don't know. I just didn't feel right. Like, even today... But I've dealt with this for 26 years, so it's a little easier these days. Um, but yeah, I just don't feel right in my body at all. I don't feel right. And apparently you're not supposed to feel this way. Like, I just want to be able to cut my hair and go to school and just... Not school, but you know, like... In school, I just didn't want to have to deal with the makeup and the clothes and the hair and the jewelry and all this. I just want to be able to throw in a chain, squirt some cologne... And look good, like, I wanted to attract females. I didn't want to attract males. And that doesn't necessarily make you transgender. Like, that could be like, you're just a lesbian. No, lesbians have pride in being female. I don't feel like a female whatsoever. And I think that's what a lot of people fail to realize about being transgender. It's not about wanting to look like a guy or wanting to be a guy. It, you don't feel like a female. You don't feel like you're in the right body you don't feel like you're doing the right things you feel like a total fraud trying to be what you are a woman makes you feel like a fraud like how 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 does that make any sense it doesn't and this is why so many transgenders are depressed suicidal and why so many people don't understand it why so many people get made fun of for it because the people making fun of this person don't understand it. Well, it's kind of hard to understand something when you going through it yourself doesn't understand. So, that's just a little bully segment in there, thrown in there. Like, if you bully people because they're trans, maybe you shouldn't. Because they've been through enough. Like, but anyway, so I opted in for this estrogen because I was going through my shit, my... It made me feel so wrong. It made me feel sick. It made me feel like I was pumping poison into my body. It was a pill. And it felt so wrong. And I don't know how I could put it into words. But it made me whack. It, it like, it messed with my moods. Like, yes, you're pump pumping 
hormones into your body. But this should have been a hormone that I already had. That I was just lacking a little. And I had high testosterone levels. So I was pumping estrogen into my body, right? I think I had to take this pill like twice a day. And it messed with my blood sugar. It messed with just everything. And I was told I was going to lose weight. And at that time, I thought me not liking myself had to do with my weight. I was not happy in the body I was. I thought me not liking myself had to do with me getting raped for six years of my life. I thought everything but the obvious that I'm transgender. Now, you going through this stuff doesn't necessarily mean you're transgender. I it wasn't until I was like 20 some years old where I was watching YouTube and I saw all these coming out videos of these trans people and all this and that. And I was like, wow, I really relate to them. And that's literally how I felt as a child. Or that's literally how I felt in school. And that's literally how I feel now. And I don't want to sit here and consider myself a transgender, trender, whatever it's called. Because of YouTube. Me watching YouTube. But it's not only like, oh, I want to try that. I want to see what it's like to be a guy. No, it's like I had an awakening. And it's like, anybody watch Sam Collins? Because literally, I feel like our stories are so similar in that sense. Because he told me, he came out to his mom and did all this and that. But he couldn't really, like, find how to put it into words. I'm sorry, he didn't come out. He wanted to come out. And he didn't know how to put it into words necessarily. Until he found a video that did. And he, how he came out is how he showed his mom. That video. So, when I came out about six months ago, I sat my fiancé down and I told her about it. And she wasn't happy about it. But then she wanted me to be happy. And she realized it has nothing to do with her happiness. And I was blessed to end up with a bisexual woman. So, it's not like she's lesbian and she's like, oh, so now I have to be with a guy. And I, I have to make her think about her sexual orientation. She fell in love with me, and I just happened to be lucky enough that she's bi. So me switching genders, or coming out as my real self, I should say, is a real good opportunity in my book. Um, I got lucky there, I should say. So, next thing, you know, we're good. Everything's good. I, not that I needed, but I got permission to train. Trans, um, I don't know why I'm losing my train of thought. Transition. So that was fine. And then I opened up to a few friends. Not every friend. I think I only opened up to like three friends that knew would understand. Everybody else I don't think would really fully grasp and understand. And to be honest, those people don't matter. So people I really trusted, I should say. And then I opened up to my mom. And my mom told my dad, but that's not here or there. Um, it took my, while to, my mom a while to understand what I was talking about, and I don't know if she really grasped it fully, but she knows I'm doing this, and I told her I was doing this, and I just wanted to tell her, and the problem is she told me I didn't come out as gay mm -hmm. properly, sorry, um, I ended up just writing it post on Facebook about it rather than going to her and talking to her about it. So she was kind of looking at me weird about all this and I was like, hey, you told me to talk to you about this stuff. So I'm sitting you down and I'm talking to you about it. Am I going to start tomorrow and all of a sudden wake up with a huge beard? Because that's how she was acting. She didn't want me to like change drastically. And it's like, it's a very, very long process. You're probably not even going to realize it. And by the time you do, you're used to it. Like, it's like losing weight. Like, oh my God, you want to lose weight? So you're going to be like 20 pounds tomorrow? Like, no. So that kind of helped her out too. And it's also really not up to her. I just wanted to give her her that ease of mind, I should say, because she had this whole shit fit about when I came out as lesbian. But <laughs> I'm not lesbian. Jokes on you.
So, I don't know. But because of that exact reason is why I don't feel like coming out. Like, I'm just me, okay? I don't need to make this whole big thing because now I look like a fool saying, hey, I'm not gay. That's why I didn't come out as gay. I came out. I have a girlfriend. That's how I came out because I don't feel lesbian. I feel weird. Satan lesbian is just odd to me. I don't feel like a lesbian because I'm not. I'm a straight guy. That's what I am. So that's also why I'm so comfortable and so strongly about moving forward in a transition because I'm trying to become who I am. And how is it that I can't go to the mall and put on makeup and make me feel, feel beautiful and, you know, smell good, look good, all this and feel wrong, all the way wrong. 180 degrees of wrong. But just thinking about starting testosterone and my voice breaking and stubble and acne in other places it shouldn't be and hair in places it shouldn't be is exciting to me. It feels the most authentic I've ever felt. So... That's kind of why I feel like this is the right track to go. And you shouldn't feel like anything because this is some real life shit. You can't turn back. So if you're not positive and you need to speak to somebody, you should. But I think I can speak for some people when I say I know what I am and I know who I am and who I should be. I've literally had dreams about it as a male. My life as a male. I have a packer that I wear literally all the time, 24-7. You know how wrong I feel when it's not on? How literally I feel like a missing part of me? Like, same with my binder. Like, I literally bought these, I think, six months ago. When I came out, I bought them. And I never felt more comfortable in my life ever. And I was prepared to feel weird and feel awkward. Being like, damn, I constantly have to adjust myself. To, like, this is more work than it should be. All because of my dysphoria. No, I feel more in me than I ever had. I feel dysphoric. I want to cop surgery, bottom surgery, and hormones. Yes. But that's not what I mean. I feel more comfortable now than I was trying to be female in high school. I hate that I suppress my feelings and my true self in middle school because of some kids I don't even talk to. Some kids I never talked to. I ended up leaving school because the bullying didn't stop, because the bull crap, the, the stuff that made me wanna die never stopped, no matter what I did to make these kids happy. Why? Do we live like that? Why do we live to make other people happy? So I wish I, you know, went through. I would have became a dyke, a butch, before I became transgender any day. I mean, before I became, um, like, a female, dressed up like female and all that, any day. Go, I'm trying to get the boys and all this. Like, I was eating pussy at 9 years old, at 10 years old. And I tried so hard and tortured myself just to get a boyfriend or two that I had to beg to even get. Like, why do we torture ourselves for society means? No. So today is the day. Today is the change that I'm making. And they open on 9.30, I'm going to... March over there and be like, yo, I'm starting this. I want to start this. I already tried, but that I was there for another medical situation. But he said he could try to help me. And if I have to cough up that money to go to an endocrinologist or an OBGYN, I will. It's just $35 versus $50. So it's only $15 more that I will. I just don't feel like I should have to. I don't need the therapy aspect of this. I know what I am. There's no way a therapist can help this out. 
I even been to therapy because of bipolar, not bipolar, because of depression and anxiety and all that. And I hate, hate counseling. I feel stupid having to explain myself and having to tell my whole life story. Just for them to start talking about my weight or my anger problems. Like, I don't have anger problems. It's not like I get mad over the slightest stuff. I hold a lot in and explode, but I'm human. I don't need to be evaluated by somebody who don't know me. No matter how many sessions we go to, you don't know me. And I want you, if you do get to know me, I want you to know me on a personal level. I don't want you to be, have. oh, I'm paying you. And you don't really care. You're just in that, analyzing me. Like, no. No. So I don't know if this helps anybody. I don't know if anybody got to say anything about this video. But I'm sorry it was so long. I just needed to tell y'all how excited I am. That hopefully I start my journey for tea today. Testosterone. Pump my shit up. For many health reasons, for many mental health reasons, physical, and just for the sanity of my future, you know, to make me feel good about myself for once, you know, not that little, oh, I look, you know when something makes you chuckle, that's how I feel like life is for me. Nothing has ever made me feel amazingly good to the point, yeah, I'm content. I'm me. Little chuckles here and there, a little, ah, yeah. But nothing as good as this will once this starts. So, I'm excited for my sex drive. I'm excited to lose weight. I know tea doesn't make you lose weight, but... That's a whole another situation for me. And it actually will help me. Um, I can't wait to freaking work out and gain muscle mass. And man, y'all. Man, this year is gonna be our year regardless, okay? Regardless on what anybody got to say about anything. You do what you need to do, okay? Everybody else's opinions may qualify for them and theirs. But not for you and yours. Don't follow anybody's footsteps. Only your own. And the man upstairs. Alright, my corn of a dog ass is done with this. Alright, guys. Peace.